by definition, capitalism will always lead to the rich getting richer and the poor getting way more poor. <laughs> by definition, show me one place. Show me one place where capitalism has led to the poor getting poorer. That is utter hogwash. Welcome back to Rigged. This month, I'm reacting to a video on YouTube called Here's Why Capitalism Sucks and Why It Needs to End. It appears to be by some kind of communist, and I can't wait to get after it. Let's go. Capitalism. It's a great thing, right? Yeah. Capitalism leads to technological advancement, economic development, and human freedom. It sure does. That is, until it doesn't. There's no question that the development of capitalism was a great thing for human society. Unfortunately, over time, capitalism has spun wildly out of control, of transforming this. rapidly from a force for positive social change into a brutal system of oppression a that's holding humanity back and destroying billions of lives. I'm sorry, a brutal system of oppression? It literally is just the free exchange of goods and telling people that they can pursue their own version of what will make them happy. It's not oppressive. If you don't want to participate in capitalism, you can literally go form a commune and have your own little socialist camp. Nobody's stopping you from doing that except for basic economics because you'll starve. To understand why, let's first take a look at the system which preceded capitalism, feudalism. Back in the days of feudalism, society was agrarian. The most important product was food, so the most important means of production were farmlands. At the top of feudal society were the feudal lords who owned the land. At the bottom were the peasants who worked the land. There were other classes too, like the church and merchants and tradespeople, like stonemasons and cobblers and coopers. There was friction and conflict between these classes from time to time, but for the most part under feudalism, society was pretty much static for hundreds of years, especially for the peasant class. Under feudal right. society, if you were born a peasant, you were probably going to die as a peasant. You were essentially yes. the property of your feudal lord, so there wasn't much opportunity for advancement or changing careers. It there was sucked. no opportunity. The other classes were pretty static too. Noble titles were passed down from father to son, and there were very few opportunities to break into the aristocratic class. Merchants and tradespeople formed powerful guilds to prevent competition and to control access to their professions. Under feudalism, the people in power did their best to restrict and control social mobility. As capitalism began to emerge hand in hand with industrialism, things began to change. I guess I like that he at least acknowledges early capitalism's gains. I mean, it's more than we usually get from communists, so he's not totally detached from reality yet. Early capitalists gave peasants opportunities they never had before. Now, instead of toiling your life away on a peasant farm for a feudal lord, you could go to work for a capitalist in exchange for wages and try to advance your lot in life. As capitalism progressed, the old social order of feudalism rapidly fell to pieces. Feudal lords were usurped by wealthy capitalists who owned land and factories. He's trying to paint this picture like only the people who are the bosses, only the people who own the companies are, ca are the capitalists, whereas everybody else is not a capitalist. Anybody in a capitalist system who supports the free exchange of goods and services outside of government intervention is technically a capitalist. So when they use terms like capitalist in this way, I understand where this is going because I've read Marx. And Marx actually tried to coin the term capitalist as a dirty word for free market beliefs. And basically he tried to say that people who believed in capital, the capitalists were the people who owned all of the money. It's a perversion of what we actually believe to be true. It's a perversion of what the free market actually stands for. And it's kind of a distraction. And it's something they have tried to use to sow class warfare. You know, he mentions under feudal times, you had a lot of class warfare. We don't have as much class warfare under capitalism, but Marxists want you to. They want you to hate people who are richer than you. They want you to hate the people that you work for. They want you to see them as villains because otherwise they can't get to their big uprising where the peasant class overthrows the capitalist class. That is their vision. Communists want bloody revolution. That is their end all be all goal. And so they're trying to make you feel that you are somehow a victim in the system because somebody gave you a job and paid you a fair wage to do it. It makes no sense. And again, I don't like to give in the use of the term capitalism to them in this context, but I do think it's important to distinguish that when we say capitalist, what we mean is actually a defined economic theory. And when Marxists and communists use the term capitalist, they're trying to sow class warfare and distrust and trying to put a certain class of people in that term. The ancient craft guilds found that they couldn't compete with modern industrial production, and the newly formed working class developed a degree of social mobility as they could move from job to job trying to seek higher wages. 
This all sounds pretty great, right? Well, it was for a while. It does. Unfortunately, the good times did not last. Over time, capitalist processes lead to increasing economic instability, inequality, and mm, societal that's, destruction. Hold on, that's not true. This is where it gets a little bit tough and we have to have a nuanced discussion because we are not currently now in a free market capitalist society. We have elements of free market capitalism in our society. You can look at certain sectors where you see higher degrees of free market capitalism versus lower degrees in fields and sectors where the government has gotten very entrenched and involved. And there's always a distinct difference between these kinds of sectors because you'll notice the ones where government have had less influence, less intervention, are thriving and doing well and there is still a lot of prosperity. And the ones where government government has gotten involved and, and done that through regulations and red tape, they tend to be more stagnant. You don't see as much innovation. You don't see as much prosperity. But what he's about to say is that in early America, which was the early origins of capitalism, things were going great for a while and then capitalism did this. That's not what happened. What happened was the progressive era of the early 1900s where the country first started moving away from free market capitalism. And throughout 1900 through 1940, you see this immense ramp up in the way that the government started interacting with our economy and with our money system. You see the government start to get a lot more involved in how people went about making their transactions, deciding their employment. And so we do now have what I would call a mixed economy that we have seen people's prosperity diminishing under in some regards thanks to government intervention. That is not thanks to capitalism. That's thanks to the bad ideas of progressives like him who came in and infiltrated our government and pushed socialist crap on all of us that we now have to live with. To understand why, let's take a look at how capitalism functions. Under capitalism, all of the old classes of lords and peasants and craftsmen and merchants have been swept away. Now there are basically just two major classes the capitalists who own the means of production, the factories and there farms and other businesses of the world, and the workers who perform the labor that keeps the wheels of the economy turning. Capitalists not only own the means of production, but they also get to keep a significant cut of whatever the worker earns or produces in the form of profit. No, the people who own the companies take on immense risk. They bear all of the burden of getting a company off the ground. They take on all of the failure if it goes down and have to pay those costs. They offer people a wage. They negotiate with them fairly as, unless the government gets involved in some capacity. And basically people agree to work for them for this wage and that is a free exchange of goods and services. They then make a bigger profit off of their investment because they did all of the initial work to get it off the ground. They put up the initial money to get the business going. They were the ones that actually bore the cost of giving you a job and paying you the money you need to live day to day. You were free to do that too. You can always go take out a loan and take on risk and work really hard and create jobs and hire other people. Nobody's stopping you from doing that in the US except maybe yourself. But the reality is most people don't want to do that because owning a business is really hard. It's a lot of work and oftentimes it doesn't pan out and you're left with the debt. And so for them to say that this is now creating some kind of different class system, no, anybody can choose how they want to participate in the capitalist system, which role they want to play. Nobody is oppressing you because you choose to not open a business yourself or work for yourself and instead want to go work for them. They're offering you a wage, you can negotiate that. That's an amazing system that has benefited us greatly. Basically, capitalist bosses steal labor value from workers and transfer that wealth to themselves. In order for capitalist institutions to survive, they have to turn a profit for the capitalists who in own any, them. In order for any institution to survive, it has to turn a profit. These people are always just so detached from reality, I feel like they somehow get stunted at 12 years old watching Walt Disney movies and can never progress past this idea of utopia that has never once come to fruition under their childlike ideas. You have to earn a profit. There are just some realities that are out there. You have to produce value for other people if you want to make money. And it's really ridiculous to somehow insinuate that that's greedy or wrong. No, profit is actually a signal that you're providing value to other people in society and producing a commodity or a service that people need that is improving their lives. It is actually a lofty, worthy goal to create profit and to then provide the jobs that come from it and stimulate the economy. That's how society actually advances. Otherwise, they'll be forced out of business by more ruthless competitors. Capitalist institutions literally can't concern themselves with anything but profits or basically they'll die. Yes, but to actually be concerned with profits and to actually ensure that you can outrank your competitors, you do have to care about things besides just the bottom line. Because other things impact profit. If people want to come work for you, 
that's a significant thing that impacts your profit. If you have such bad labor practices that people don't want to work for you, no matter how great your idea is, no matter how good your product is, you won't be able to make it. And so, yes, they do care about profit, but in order to get profit, and this is the beautiful thing about capitalism, you have to provide value to your fellow man, and you have to provide an environment where people want to come and work. That's actually a great thing. It incentivizes human nature to actually serve other people and to create better infrastructure around us. And we've seen this over and over throughout society. Even right now, as much as people on the left love to demonize Amazon, Amazon provides an amazing service that has greatly transformed society and benefits all of us on a daily basis. And in order to do that, they've had to provide a good working environment where literally millions of people want to come work for them. And if they didn't want to, they would not be able to continue to offer that, that service. And so to do that, we see them offering wages that are far higher than what you would typically see for unskilled workers in the market. We see them offering to pay for college. We see great benefits at Amazon. These are things they've done without government pressure or coercion because they have to compete with their other competitors to get the workers in order to get the profit. Now, to be clear, there are some people who like to say that Amazon doesn't offer a good working environment, that it apparently is oppressive, that people can't take breaks, that they're, work they're forced to work really long hours and things of this nature. But notably, it's the labor unions who have been pushing that message the most heavily in the past couple of years, and they've run with it hard because labor unions increasingly cannot force people to join them anymore, thanks to right-to-work laws in 27 states, and thanks to a big decision by the Supreme Court known as the Janus case. Because they can no longer force people to pay them wages, we now see that participation in labor unions is at the lowest point in American history. It's less than 6% of the private workforce that actually chooses to join a union when they're not forced to. And so unions have been coming in and, and working to try to push people back into unionization in a myriad of ways, but one way they've been doing that is going after Amazon hardcore, because it's one of the largest workplaces in the country. And they know if they can get infiltrated into Amazon, they would then have access to a lot of workers' dollars. So they've been going hard, they've been pushing this narrative, but here's what's notable. The Amazon workers largely have not been buying it. They went all out down in Bessemer, Alabama all of last year, spent untold amounts of money trying to convince workers that their workplace was so oppressive they had to have a union come in and save them. And guess what? The workers voted overwhelmingly not to unionize. So I'm not buying that narrative. I think Amazon is a great example of a company that is swiftly continuing to improve, offer better services, but also offer better working conditions for their people, and notably even continuing to invest in more environmental practices thanks to market demands. That's capitalism. Nearly all of the efforts of human civilization are now yoked to the will of capitalists who own the factories, the financial institutions, the mass media, the social networks, the tech companies, the medical and pharmaceutical companies. They own everything, so they get to set the agenda for our society. Who else would own it? The government? And what kind of agenda do capitalists have? Well, it's actually really simple. Capitalism steers humanity toward one end and one end only. Ever-increasing profits for capitalists. See, capitalists don't really care about the welfare of workers or protecting the environment. They can't because those things aren't profitable. As I just pointed out, they do. They absolutely do because they have to in order to earn your business. If the market cares about environmental issues, which increasingly we see that it does, companies have to start investing in environmental practices that are sound to continue earning your dollar. Again, Earning profit is not just this thing where you see gold and that's the end all be all and you'll do anything to get it. They try to make it sound like it's cutthroat and that that's the only thing that capitalism entails. And maybe it would be if it weren't for this important factor, which is that capitalism takes that human nature that is greedy and maybe even selfish and, and maybe even just interested in your own outcomes and it forces you to have to care about what other people want in order to meet your own needs and desires. And so under capitalism, businesses do have to care about environmental practices. Practices. And in fact, we can see that if we look at which businesses are ready to invest in environmental practices without government force. And we can actually see this if you look at what countries are doing better on green energy right now. I promise you, it's not the communist countries. It's not China. It's not Venezuela. It's not Cuba. We increasingly see that capitalist countries are faring better with addressing these issues. And we see that the people most responsible for violations on the environment are government entities, which these people want to give unilateral power to. So it's quite a joke to suggest that people under capitalism don't have to care about ethics and morals and, and actually taking care of the environment. Our system forces people to care if they want to earn a profit and again, meet their own needs and desires. Capitalism doesn't allow for businesses to be driven by ethics or morals or scruples. Only building profits will allow a company to survive. 
Anything that reduces profitability is inherently harmful to a capitalist entity. Sure, sometimes profitability does line up with good causes. Sometimes it's cheaper to be more environmentally sustainable, for instance, or maybe donating to a charity will net a big fat tax break for the capitalist, or maybe it's just good marketing to support a worthy cause. But this is all just incidental. But this is all just incidental. All these good things do happen under capitalism, but they're just incidental. They're doing the right things for the wrong reasons. Capitalism does spur charity. It does spur business owners to have to care about social causes. We even saw that with like the BLM rallies of 2020. Companies rushed in to join this cause and to show support because that's where they saw the market going. They donated large sums of money to this. Increasingly, we see companies getting more and more involved in the political sector and weighing in on issues that they believe are human rights issues because the market is demanding it. Now, notably, his complaint seems to be that the business owners don't innately care about the causes that he wants them to care about. To which I say, so what? They don't need to. The market forces them to care. If they want to earn your dollar, they have to care about what you as the consumer care about. They have to care about what the market is demanding if they want to compete. That's a good thing that capitalism has in place. Communism has no such structure in place. I don't know why this guy thinks that if all of a sudden capitalism was gone, humans would just innately be so generous and loving and caring and care about each other's social issues and want to protect the environment and we'd all sit in a circle and sing kumbaya. That is completely illiterate of basic human nature, which is actually my big problem consistently with communism and socialism. My field of thought looks at what we call praxeology, which is the study of human action. It's important to know how and why humans operate if you want to have a functioning society. Libertarianism and free market capitalism takes those things into account and figures out a way to incentivize the worst parts of human nature and actually make them better for the good of all people. Communism wants to ignore those factors and because of it, you always see greater oppression, you always see people dealing with real brutality under these communist systems because there is nothing to constrain those instincts. Don't be fooled for a moment into believing that capitalism cares about the welfare of society. It's all about the profit. Keep in mind that there are only two ways to increase profits. A company can either increase prices for consumers or reduce costs. Competition tends to put a hard limit on what a business can charge, so as businesses become more powerful, they will always seek to eliminate competition and create monopolies so that they can charge consumers as much as possible to maximize company profits. Now, that's true that companies will seek to create monopolies, they will seek to prevent competition if they have a government system that lets them which is really the only time that you see monopolies flourish. That's really the only time you see a lack of competition in society. And in America, it's only thanks to government intervention that has ever been allowed to happen. Because without the government coming in and actually enshrining companies, giving them corporate welfare or subsidies or selective tax breaks, or using things like antitrust to go after businesses they don't like in order to shield businesses they do like, you don't see companies have the ability to do this. They're not able to consolidate power. Not only are they not able to raise their prices a lot higher than competitors, they're also not able to lower the prices they pay for wages a lot lower than their competitors. This is something that benefits us as consumers and as workers. When it comes to driving down costs, the primary cost for almost every business is human labor. As such, capitalist businesses are always seeking to pay workers as little as possible or just eliminate them through things like automation to drive down wages as much as they can get away with. Naturally, this leads to tremendous accumulation of wealth for the capitalist class and ever-increasing wealth inequality between workers and capitalists. By definition, capitalism will always lead to the rich getting richer and the poor getting way more poor. <laughs> By definition, show me one place. Show me one place where capitalism has led to the poor getting poorer. That is utter hogwash. This guy is, I guess he's never looked at a basic piece of data in his life. Every single place, every single place that capitalism has been tried, and I say tried because it's never been perfectly implemented, but every single place capitalism has been tried has led to less poverty, less hunger, greater economic growth, and a higher quality of life, longer lifespans than ever before seen throughout human history. Every time his crud theory has been tried. It has led to poverty, destitution, starvation, inability to get basic medicine, people going swimming with sharks to escape his economic theories. I cannot believe he would even have the gall to say, by definition, capitalism leads to the rich getting richer and poor getting poor. No, by definition, capitalism leads to everybody getting richer. You can look it up. Look at every single country that has tried it. You'll never be able to prove me wrong. 
A lot of folks try to argue that capitalism can be reformed, that capitalists can be restrained through regulation and legislation that would put limits on the abuses capitalists can make to the people of the world and to our environment. Nope. That's not what we try to argue. Actually, we try to argue that those regulations put in place directly impede capitalism and the benefits of it, that the government should stay entirely out of the economy, and that every time it tries to intervene and put constraints on capitalism and regulations, it leads to people getting hurt. It leads to people being poorer. It actually only leads to reducing the possibilities of capitalism and what it can produce for all of humankind. This liberal position cruelly ignores the fact that even the most effective regulations and reforms do nothing to correct the power imbalances of society. Any such reforms are destined to be inadequate because they don't disrupt who ultimately holds the power in the system. As long as capitalists hold the reins of the means of production, they will always hold virtually limitless power over society. No, they don't hold limitless power over society because they have to get you to come work for them. They have to get you to want to buy the product. They actually answer to all of us. I just, this is so, again, it comes down to this class warfare idea where they want you to hate the people who are actually producing things that are making your life better, that are actually providing you with jobs, that are actually the people who are moving society forward. They want you to hate them because you're not them. I really can't stand this line of thinking. I think it's very dangerous. I think it actually gets down to a pretty vile component of human nature. I do like that he admits that regulations never actually fix anything. On that, we can agree. Another major myth about capitalism is the idea of meritocracy. Capitalist propaganda seeks to convince us that hard work and good ideas will rise to the top and that anyone can become a rich capitalist if they're willing to play the game. Unfortunately, that game is severely rigged, such that for every worker who does manage to break into the capitalist caste of billionaires, there are millions of workers who suffer and toil and misery from the cradle to the grave. So he literally is saying you have to become a billionaire under capitalism or you are oppressed. You're not in the capitalist class unless you're a billionaire. Notice how the mark keeps moving, because I'm pretty sure a couple years ago it was a millionaire. Now it's a billionaire. They just keep moving the mark. It has to be up here. No, most businesses in the US, the vast majority of businesses in the US are small businesses. They're owned by families. They're people in the middle class, maybe upper middle class, maybe just middle class. Aren't they then too the greedy capitalists who own all the capital? This is just, they always just jumble their words and move all over the place, but at the end of the day, he really does want you to believe that unless you become a billionaire, you're oppressed under the system. And that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. He also wants you to believe that because you're not in the billionaire class, you have no say over what happens in society. That is also far from the truth. Do I believe that the US has moved into being too much of an oligarchy? Yes. But that is only because we've let the government get too big and let it have too much say over the market, too much say over what businesses can and can't do. Therefore, we incentivize businesses to come in and pay them and lobby them for special favors, and we see this handshake arrangement behind the scenes. I do think, to some extent, our economy has become rigged thanks to that. It's rigged against the small business owners. It's rigged against the average everyday Americans who consistently are robbed of their tax dollars, 30 plus percent a year, and are forced to give it to big businesses and give it to people for special favors. That's wrong. That's cronyism, and true capitalists are completely against that and have worked harder against that than any communist ever has. But to say that that is a function of capitalism versus government is completely disingenuous. Some folks say that if we got rid of capitalism, universal laziness would take over society and nobody would work anymore because there'd be no incentive. This position ignores the fact that in capitalist society, the people who work the hardest make the least amount of money, and the people with the greatest fortunes, the capitalists, live out their days in luxurious laziness. I think this is really interesting, though, because, one, I've often gone onto like communist Reddit threads, which are highly amusing. I, I very much encourage you to do it. And I look at these people and they talk about like, oh, if we weren't under capitalism, here's the things I would do with my time. And it notably is never that they would go work in a grocery store, that they would go work in a bank, that they would go farm. It's never any of the things that we actually need for society to function or for them to even get their basic needs met. It's always people saying like, oh, I'd be a poet. I'd be an artist. I'd be an author. It's like, sweeties. Nobody's stopping you from doing those things now, except maybe your lack of talent. You can be all of those things under a capitalist society. If you're good at them and you can actually sell them, you can live off your ability to do those things. 
If you're not, then you need to do something that actually creates value. And so it's kind of funny to me because it's like they never think about how will this be allocated, who has to go do all these jobs that they don't actually want to do. They always envision communism as a way for them to get into the luxury class where they don't have to work. And so when we say that not having capitalism would make people inherently lazy, I don't think it's that people wouldn't work. It's that they think they would get to do different work than what they do right now. When in reality, they'd be assigned work and be told what to do and have no jurisdiction over how they spent their days. In the US, you get to pick those things. And as long as you're willing to work hard and as long as you actually have talent, you can probably be successful at it. And if you're not, then you can pick a different career, but you still have a lot more say over what your days look like and you can still pursue your hobbies. Capitalism is an engine that robs wealth from the working people of the world and transfers it to a small number of capitalists who feel entitled to our money. It had its time and place in history. It was admittedly a great step forward from feudalism, but it's outworn its usefulness and now's the time for capitalism to be dismantled so that humanity can fulfill our true potential. Oh God, There's a lot graphic. more to be said about capitalism. In my next video, we'll talk more about wages and profits and how capitalists steal the labor value of workers. Steal the labor value. They pay you for your labor but they're stealing it. So click subscribe if you want to stick around for that. In the meantime, you can check out my blog at non-compete.com where I have a lot more articles about stuff like this. I'm American Johnson. This is Non-Compete. That was a Thanks doozy. For watching. I mean, it's, I don't know. A lot of it is just sort of like they regurgitate these talking points over and over. They actually never have data to back up their claims. And they really do, at the end of the day, sound very ungrateful to me and actually privileged to use their word. And they have no understanding of what they've been born into. We have been born into one of the greatest countries humankind has ever known. It does have flaws, again, thanks to government intervening in the market in our lives. But when you look at how the rest of the world lives, even to this day, it is incredible what we have here in the United States. This is why we have millions of people who are trying to come here and live here. They are willing to risk their life and their freedom even to try to cross our border just to get here for the opportunity to work. That should tell you something about how the rest of the world lives. You notably never see Americans or people who live in the US going swimming with sharks to escape capitalism, like you do places like Cuba and Venezuela, where they're so desperate to get away from this deadly ideology, they're willing to actually dunk themselves in shark infested waters to escape its brutality. I, it's completely detached from reality. It's completely detached from any knowledge of how of how society has actually progressed. And it actually makes me quite sad because people fall for this propaganda and they continue to blame capitalism for problems that are actually created by government and continue to push us further and further away from free markets, which have led to more prosperity and a greater elimination of hunger and poverty than any other system we've ever seen. In a very swift time period, we're talking 200 and something years that we have seen this progress. And so we have to do a better job of ensuring that we get the actual numbers in front of people and actually make sure that we're defending what the system is and clarifying what free market capitalism looks like and what is actually a violation of it because they continue to try to conflate the two. And we also have to make sure that people continue to look at representations of their ideas and practice because they're devastating. Even right now in China, we see people literally locked in their homes, starving, begging for their government to let them out to get basic food and medicine. They're killing dogs in the streets. This is what his ideas lead to. So do we have some issues in the US we need to address? Yes, but I would much rather be focusing on those problems and working to get government out of the way and letting free market capitalism continue to thrive than having to face the problems created by this deadly ideology that has never once made anybody's life better and has always led to death and destitution. You've been watching Rigged. If you've had an experience living under communism or socialism, we'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments so we can respond. Otherwise, be sure to like, share, and review, and we'll see you next month on Rigged.